All right, hello everyone. Thanks so much for joining our developer track today. Today we'll be walking through our checkout and subscriptions API and how you can use this API to quickly and simply accept one-time and recurring payments. First, let me start by introducing myself. My name is Divya Narayanan. I am a product lead on our e-commerce team leading our checkout API. Um, I'll hand it off to Anand and Felipe to introduce themselves as well. Hello, uh, I'm Anand Rao. I am a software engineer on the online checkout team. And Felipe? Hi, my name is Felipe Lecce. I am a software engineer in the subscriptions team, helping build the subscriptions API. Awesome. Thanks so much, Anand and Felipe. So over the next 25 minutes, we'll first reintroduce you to the checkout API. Next, Anand will walk through a demo of how you can easily embed our checkout API in any workflow to accept payments. Then he'll share how you can utilize our checkout API to accept subscription or recurring payments. And then finally, Felipe will uh, help us understand how you can utilize the subscriptions API to manage those recurring payments. But first, I really wanted to start by um, with the checkout API. So we've had the checkout API available with, for developers for the past few years now, and we've heard your feedback. And now we've, we've released a new version of our checkout API, which is simpler, more customizable, and more robust. Our new endpoints are now available as part of an early access program. We're excited to share more with you today um, and also really welcome your feedback as we continue to make this as useful as we can for your business. But first, why is checkout important? Uh, so building a custom checkout page can be really time consuming. It involves piecing together a number of APIs. It involves building a custom front end. It involves configuring payment methods, um, figuring out translations. And once you, once you actually built that checkout page, um, research actually shows that the global cart abandonment rate is around 70%. And often it's the design and flow of checkout that is the sole reason why customers abandon their cart. And so nailing that checkout flow and design is really important, and it can have a really meaningful impact on your bottom line. In fact, a large e-commerce site can increase their conversion rate by as much as 35% by just making design changes to checkout. And so I am so excited to reintroduce the checkout API to you guys today. It's the simplest and fastest way to integrate Square Payments into any workflow. With minimal coding, you can render a square hosted payment page for your customers. No front end needed, we'll handle the UI. Um, our page has been conversion and mobile optimized, it's PCI compliant, and it's built on top of a variety of our square APIs under the hood from our web payments SDK, our orders API, customers API, and more. Um, and this is our UI um, that I'm excited to kind of show you in this GIF right now. So there are five key ways that we have upgraded our checkout API. The first is that it's even easier to integrate. Just send us a name and a price and we can set up a payment page for you, no problem. Um, we've now introduced new payment methods, including cash app pay, after pay, and the ability to, square, to, uh, to save a card on file using Square Pay. We've upgraded the design. It's now mobile first and we can support logos and images. Um, we have more flexible configuration options. There's a long list of them, um, but some of them include uh, the ability to offer tipping, custom fields, and subscriptions. And then finally, we've expanded our footprint so that we are now in every geography that Square accepts payments. And um, we support some additional languages, including kind of French, Spanish, and Japanese, in addition to English. Uh, so here's a full list of our features. I won't go into it in detail, but please do feel free to take a look and see if there's anything that you're curious about that might be really useful to your business. Um, finally, I wanted to close off by sharing two key example businesses um, utilizing our checkout API. They include VIP Shop Management, a Square partner that offers auto shop management software, and SoundHound, a voice-enabled AI platform. VIP Shop Management actually utilizes our checkout API to enable auto shops to, on their platform to request a payment via text message. Um, and they take advantage of our quick pay functionality, which allowed them to get going pretty quickly. Perfect. I will now hand it off to Anand, who walk us through a short demo of the checkout API. Thank you. 
Thanks, Divya, for that great introduction on all the new features that we've added. Um, today, in this demonstration, we will be focusing on the new endpoints that we've added, and also we'll walk through an example of how to create a payment link. Next slide. All right, introducing payment links. So these are the list of endpoints that we've added to our checkout API, and we will be mainly focusing on the create payment link endpoint for this presentation. All the other endpoints are mainly used to manage the payment link that we create. Uh, the create payment link uh, supports most of the features of the create checkout endpoint. In addition, it also lets you configure your checkout experience. In order to use all the new functionality that we have added, we recommend developers to use the payment create payment link endpoint uh, for any new integrations they have through the checkout API. Next slide. All right, so in order to create a payment link, let's look at the, the request object. So there are two main ways you can create a payment link. One is by passing in a quick pay object, and the other one is by passing in a square order object. Now let's look at the quick pay object. Over here, quick pay is a very simple way of creating a payment link. That's mostly the simplest and the quickest way of creating a payment link as well. We just need to pass in a name, price, and the location. The location over here is the, is the location ID you would like the payment, I, payment object to be associated with. Let's say your use case is a bit more complex and you would you like to realize, you like to leverage custom uh, items, discounts, and taxes. In that case, you can send us a squared order object and we'll create a payment link for that as well. Let's say you would like to, we also allow you to configure the checkout by enabling features via the checkout options. You can also pre-populate buyer information data and also pass in a optional payment node, which, we'll, uh, which we will associate with the payment link. There's one thing I wanted to highlight over here. You just need to send us either a quick pay or a square order in order to create the payment link. And this will depend on the use case that you have. In the, in the next couple of slides, we'll be walking through on how to create a payment link. Next slide. All right, so here's how we can create a payment link. So let's take the use case that I am a custom design and printing company, and I want to send a link to a customer to take a payment. In this case, I want to create a link for $100. So on the right, we have a code request over here in which we're creating a payment link using the quick pay option. As you can see, that object just takes three things, the name, why we want to create the link, the price. In this case, it's $100 represented in cents, and the location ID. That's the location where we want the payment link to be associated with. We can just send this and we can get a payment link. However, let's enable a couple of other options. Through the checkout options, we would like to enable the tipping. We would also like to request a shipping address from the customer. Let's say we also want to accept Afterpay and Cash App Pay as the payment methods. And lastly, we would like to request a account number from the customer. We can do this by adding a custom field. There's one thing that I would like to highlight. Any custom fields added through the request comes up as a required field. So we can be rest assured that customers will be able to <clears throat> add information in these fields. Next slide. All right, so now you've sent us the request and we do a couple of things for you. <clears throat> First, we create a square order for you. Next, then we create a payment link. And lastly, we'll send you a SMS friendly short URL. If you look at the response, we also send you the ID of the square order that we just created for you. Independent to the payment link, you can also use Square Web Webhooks to get notified when a payment is made for this particular order. Next slide. All right, so now sellers can customize their checkout and make it closer to match their branding. They can do this by uploading a full width logo using the Square dashboard. They can do this by going to their account settings, location, and location details. The logo that a seller can upload over here will show up as the header on the checkout page. Next slide. All right, so now we have created a link. We have the link with us and we have shared it with our buyer. There are many ways you can do this. You can send it via text. It can be on the website, a dashboard, or a QR code. Once a buyer goes to the checkout page, this is what they will see. On the top, they would see a the seller logo. And while creating the checkout, the, the payment link, we also enable tipping. So that is also what they will see. Also, it, at the bottom, they will see the custom field that we had added. As you can see, that's a required field over here. While the customer is making, going through the checkout process, they will have the option to save their shipping and payment information. 
This is just something for them so they can have a faster checkout the next time they make a purchase from you. Next slide. All right, so once the payment is done, the customer will be redirected to a Square hosted order confirmation page. We will also send the customer a itemized Square receipt. Let's say in your case, you would like to use your own confirmation page. No problem. You can let us know the redirect URL through the checkout options and we'll use that as the confirmation page. Once the order is paid, it will appear in the order manager in the Square dashboard. Next slide. All right, so along with surfacing payments, we also support subscription. You can use our payment links to start a subscription link. In this case, what we expect you is to create a subscription plan. There are two ways you can create a subscription plan. One is through the Square dashboard, and the other one is through the catalog API. Once you create a subscription plan with the cadence, all you need to do is pass in the ID through the checkout options object. On the right over here, we are creating a payment link for a monthly wine box subscription. Over here, we're also adding two custom fields with the wine club membership number and the birth date. Next slide. Once, when the customer visits this page, they will see the name of the, of the payment link, they'll see the price, and they'll also see the cadence. This cadence is the cadence of the subscription plan that you just created. Once a customer goes through this flow, they will be, we will basically save their payment information on file, and then we will use this card on file and automatically charge them for subsequent payments. This is how you can use Checkout API for just one-to-one -one payments, or you can use Checkout API to create a subscription. Now, to manage the subscription, I will hand it off to Felipe, who can let us know how we can use the subscription API. Thank you, Anand and Divya. Uh, what you are showing here on the Checkout API, that looks awesome. And you know we're excited to see what people can build with it. I'm going to show you now how you can use the Subscriptions API to manage those subscriptions that you created using the Checkout API. Next slide, please. Subscriptions are a very popular way to create long-term relationships between the sellers and the buyers. And it also maintains a steady stream of revenue for those sellers, which brings predictability and you know it's good for business. Last year, we launched a subscriptions API in general availability. And since then, we've launched a few new features such as pause and resume, plan swapping, the source field, and we plan on bringing many more features to you in the future. Next slide, please. Square Subscriptions also is present in our Square dashboard, so on the seller dashboard via the web, and we're soon going to be launching on the Square point of sale. So any subscriptions that you create either via the Checkout API or via the Subscriptions API or any other integration or you know, Square dashboard and point of sale in the future will show up in both of these two first-party experiences. So you don't need to build the entire uh, subscription experience. You can build, integrate with our API to the parts that make it make sense for your integration. Next slide, please. A few use cases that we've seen that benefit from using the subscriptions API. Gravity Forms is a form builder that uses the API to extend subscriptions through their lead forms. Superpay is a subscription payment provider that build a buyer facing portal for managing their subscriptions. Birdie is a golf software provider. Taramala is a yoga studio software provider. Both of them rely on the subscriptions API to offer services, offer the subscription services through the through our API. Next slide, please. Now we're going to go through the demo and we're going to cover the demo, uh, assuming that you've created the subscriptions via the checkout API. If you go to the next slide, please. In this case, here we are. Uh, these are the key endpoints that you need to be aware of when dealing with the subscriptions API. You can create a subscription, search for it, retrieve it, update, cancel, and pause, and resume. Um, for our use case here, we're only going to be we're not going to be discussing the create endpointing again. We're assuming that you've created it through the checkout API. Next slide, please. Cool. Your buyer has gone through the checkout flow and they've purchased the subscription. You can now search for that subscription using the customer ID and call in the search endpoint. Using that customer ID in the body, we now see in the response the subscription that has the most important fields to note are the ID, which you use in subsequent requests, the location ID, which is the location from where the subscription is billing, the plan ID, which was the one that was provided in the checkout API, 
the Kasuei D. And then here we'll jump to the status, which shows us active and a, an array of invoice IDs. Every time the subscription bills, a new invoice ID is added to this array. And you can call the, the invoices API to get more information about this invoice. If it was paid, what was the amount for this invoice and every other information that you can uh, see on the invoice API. Next slide, please. Cool. Now, if your buyer, for example, decided to take a vacation and now needs to pause your subscription for some time, you can do that through the pause endpoint. Using that same subscription ID that you got from the search endpoint, you use it in the URL and hit the pause endpoint. That will schedule a pause for the end of the current billing cycle. That scheduled pause is represented here in the response as an action. You can think of actions as future scheduled changes to your subscription. When we look at the subscription, we see that the current charge through date which is the date for which the subscription is already charged through, is April 24th. So the pause is scheduled for exactly the same date for which that subscription is, um, is charged through. Once that date is passed, the status will change from active to paused, and it will not bill until it is resumed. Next slide, please. Now your customers are back from vacation. They're ready to resume your subscription. You can call the resume endpoint, again, using the subscription ID in the URL. And in this case, we're calling the resume endpoint with the resume change timing at the end of the billing cycle so that when we make this call, it will schedule a resume at the end of the current billing cycle. We can see here that the uh, subscription was starting on the 24th. It's a monthly subscription. So it was the resume action is scheduled for May 24th, so one month after it was uh, paused. And once the resume action takes place, the status will change back to active and it will resume billing that subscription. Next slide, please. Another use case that you can think about is skipping a certain cycles for your subscriptions. You can think of this for like a meal kit that you want to skip a number of cycles, or if your buyer already knows how long they're gonna be out for, you can directly schedule the pause and the resume in one go. And you don't need to manually calculate the dates when you want to pause and resume. You can give us a pause cycle duration and that tells us that you want to skip billing the subscription for two cycles. And in the response, you can see that there are two actions scheduled. There's one pause action scheduled for April 24th and then a resume action scheduled for June 24th, which is two months after the pause action has taken place. Next slide, please. Well, we know we never want to experience churn, but it is inevitable in our business. So if your buyer wants to cancel the subscription, then you can call the cancel endpoint, and that will too schedule a, call, a cancel action to the end of the current billing cycle. So when that cancel action takes place, it will change the status from active to canceled, and it will not bill that subscription again. Well, these are the main uh, endpoints and use cases that you need to be aware of when dealing with the subscriptions API. If you go to the next slide, please. We hope that you've learned something and we'll now open up to Q&A. Awesome. So I, I do know that there were um, some questions asked about Afterpay and Cash App Pay uh, previous uh, in some of the breakout sessions before this. Um, so we're very excited to have this available. Um, if a seller is eligible for Afterpay, once it's enabled on the link, it should be uh, it should automatically render on their page for eligible transactions and for um, elig eligible sellers. We do have some eligibility requirements around kind of the business category that they're in. Um, but, uh, and, and also uh, if the seller is based in the US and Australia, that would all, it would also render automatically. So uh, we're excited to offer that as an op option for buy now and pay later. Uh, another question we've received is around um, kind of the customizability of the UI and how we plan to uh, really, you know, add more functionality there over time. Uh, today, what we can do is, as Anand mentioned, you can add a logo and have that render on the checkout page automatically. 
And um, if uh, sellers have images added to items in their item catalog, that will also show automatically on the checkout page in the order summary. Um, over time, we're excited to add more branding features and functionality and very much welcome your feedback in uh, our Build with Square Slack channels. Uh, I don't believe uh, I don't believe we're seeing any other questions. Don't hesitate. We're happy to answer them. All right, I think we've got one coming in. Uh, got it. Um, so we have a question from Tad. Anand, would you like to handle this one? So, in the, in your, so your question is, if we have a custom website with a card, how would we send those card items to the checkout API? So I'll assume this card has multiple items in it. So in that case, uh, you can pass us an order object instead of the quick pay. So previously in my example, I had used the quick pay object, which just takes a name and price. Instead of that, in your case, you would just send us a order object with all the catalog items, the taxes, the discounts, and we would just surface and create a payment link for that. That's how you would do it. I hope that answered your question. Perfect. Well, um, I think if we don't have any other questions coming in, um, I wanted to uh, thank you again so much for your um, time this morning. We are uh, really so excited about the changes that we've made here on the checkout API and also on uh, the ability to take recurring payments. Uh, we really do hope that you use it. We hope that you share your feedback with us and um, we're excited to continue to work with you over time. Um, so I'll kind of wrap up for now. Uh, thanks again and uh, do visit our um, developer community pages. Do, develop, uh, do visit our Build with Square Slack channel so you can participate in the conversation and also uh, so we can answer any other questions that you may have. Uh, thanks so much, folks. We really appreciate your time. See ya.